island breathes. It inhales as waves pound relentlessly, slowly breaking down porous lava rock. The sands of Kua Bay suck in the water from the latest downpour, and nearby palm trees thank the heavens as coconuts swell. It exhales, plumes of smoke from Kilauea, Burgundy, Kona, coffee beans, and stories of Pele, the lava goddess from the mouths of elders. I shriek with excitement as a sea turtle pops his algae green head out from the water as flippers and snorkel gear can't be attached quickly enough. A local points to her brothers as they emerge from the bay with fish and crabs hanging from their waist as they clutch the spears used to slay this morning's haul. You want into the water where they're getting out now, she says. But be careful, it's slippery, yeah? Accepting her kindness is more difficult than it should be. I wonder if I'm simply a voyeur, exploiting these islands' beauties and their resources for my own satisfaction, my guilt as clear as the waters for which I swim. Why isn't this pineapple ripe? This coffee costs what? You call this a Mai Tai? Hey boss, do me a favor and uh, add an extra shot of rum, would you? Thanks. Or how do you say uh, mahalo? Or is it mahalo? Nah, tomato, tomato. As I submerge myself into the warm water, I can hear my breath through the snorkel gear clearer than ever before. Every sense seems heightened as I'm now privy to a new world, new yet somehow familiar, beautiful, fragile, mysterious, this world that mirrors my subconscious, a world seldom explored. The sea turtle floats effortlessly in front of me like a long-awaited dream within this subconscious world. Not wanting to open my eyes back to reality, a rush of salt water up my nose forces me awake. The island breathes. It inhales, explores from all over the world. But the islands choke as they bring with them plants, animals, politics, religion invasive to the islands, taking over both the landscape and the minds of its people. It exhales, its own explorers. Like Eddie Aikau, not afraid to conquer open oceans in their canoes, to visit distant cousins in Tahiti. Guam, all of Polynesia. I'm amazed at Hawaiian's resiliency. With pride, Boyd speaks of his ancestors and reassures me that while human sacrifice might have been common to appease the gods of old Hawaii, the practice was halted by Kamehameha I long before Western influences ever stepped foot on the islands. Political victories include honoring Hawaiian language as a national language and native status for its citizens, but each time the islands inhale another political victory, they exhale another subway, as $5 footlongs can be more common than poke or potato mac salad. Besides, how can anyone eat fresh when those in power drag their feet to prove no spray and no GMO laws that the island's people fight for? The island breathes. It inhales the hopes and dreams of young Hawaiians, generation desperate to contribute to the island's rich history. It exhales. This generation to the mainland is why an education is cut. At the same time, tourism and property values soar, making it impossible to afford or just partake in the beauty myself and others take for granted. As the sun sets, silver waves turn burnt orange. As the tide comes in and the swell gets ever larger. Then the earth shakes. Mother Earth is alive. The subtle quake is a reminder that while these islands have seen much in the 1500 years since Polynesian open ocean canoes first landed on its shores, these islands' peoples, their cultures, colonialization, my own exploitation, are only a tiny piece of the island's rich, beautiful, natural history. The island breathes. It inhales, alo, reminding me to be ever present within this moment, it exhales. Ha, ah, the breath of life for me to take in, replenishing my mind, my body, my soul. The island breathes. Aloha, I breathe.